New book today, Book of, of Philemon. Philemon meaning affectionate. He, he's a trooper that Paul was quite fond of. But what you're going to see here, and I think we need to familiarize ourselves with the situation. Here at Colossae, we have some good people, but we have a slave that ran away from Philemon. And he traveled in Paul's circle, and Paul converted him. And this slave turned out to be a great helper to Paul. And Paul, because of Roman law, must return the slave to be doing, to do what is right. And Paul would always do that. But at the same time, Philemon owed Paul pretty heavy. And Paul is using psychology to let Philemon know, I'm, I'm returning your slave, but you will um, kind of maybe put it on my tab because you owe me, okay? And, and he's speaking up for, for this one slave and Onesimus, and which means to profit one. Uh, and um, uh, so um, there we go. Let's just get right into it and we'll take it as we go. You'll see Paul using psychology. Why would God allow a book of the Bible to be about one slave? Because human beings have a way of enslaving themselves. You can enslave yourself to the way of the world. You can enslave yourself to usury. You can enslave yourself to ideas. And what you want to do is, in Christ, be free. So basically, that's what this book is about. As we get into it, Philemon, one short book, only one chapter, so we begin with verse 1. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. He really, I mean, you know, he's not putting on, he was dearly beloved, and he was a f fellow laborer, and he was well respected, and um, and so it is that uh, that he, um, he begins to lay the groundwork, okay? Verse 2, and to our beloved Ephia, which is the wife of Philemon, his wife, and um, means fruitful, and she was. And our Kippius, which is to say his son, means a lover of horses or a carer for horses. Our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Uh, and so it is that here we're, we have a church going here, and he's the leader of it, and so forth, and has that responsibility. Verse 3, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He's laying the groundwork here to make his petition, peti uh, petition but he's really building up uh, Philemon, letting him know how much he respects him and so forth. Verse 4, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. I really remember you, old good buddy. Verse 5, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. And here he has converted this slave that ran away. And um, he's become a, a real solid Christian, one of the saints to be exact. So again, Paul keeps laying the groundwork here. Verse 6 that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Uh, that, um, and so it is that he, he lets him know, I, I trust and know you're going to do the right thing. And you always have and you probably always will. Verse 7, for we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. In other words, this is personal now. You, you, you uplift the whole church. You uplift the whole body. And, and we really care for you. 
And again, uh, these things are true. Paul wouldn't lie about anything just to butter somebody up. He was a good man. But at the same time, he's using psychology. Um, and what this amounts to is responsibility. Philemon was a very responsible person. He had his family. He had his church in his own home. He was well thought of not only in, by the Colossians, but by Paul and many of the other, as Paul probably is in, this is written probably when Paul was in prison the first time in Rome, and, and this slave had helped Paul quite a bit while he was still in prison. Matter of fact, Paul wanted to keep him as his own helper in the church, but the Roman law wouldn't allow that because uh, uh, it just would not be possible. But here's responsibility and discipline in following and doing God's work. Uh, and certainly this man was an excellent, outstanding Christian, one that followed God, one that loved the Lord. And let's go with the next verse. And here he comes to, down to the fact here. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient. I, I, it, uh, I, I've got a favor I want to ask you. And I'm going to be bold in it. It may seem like I'm a little bold. Verse 9, Yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, being such and one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I, I'm here in prison. You owe me a favor. I, and I'm going to be bold in asking it. I'm getting on along in years. I mean, after all, Paul's the one that converted uh, Philemon. So Philemon owed Paul. Uh, that's what brought him into the truth and into the ministry. And Paul says, uh, for love's sake, I'm going to beseech you. Verse 10, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Uh, Onesimus, um, and this is Latinized, it's not the Greek, it's, it's a Latin form. It means profitable or one that blesses. And he said, he's, um, he, he's my own son spiritually, that I converted him. He's a different person. Verse 11, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. Now, don't forget, profitable is what Onesimus means. That's his name. Now, uh, you can go back to um, um, Colossians uh, chapter 4 and 9, and I'm, which I'm going to do. Colossians 4 9 in the book of Colossians reads, with Paul's writing, with Onesimus, here he is, a faithful and beloved brother who is one of you, they shall make known unto you, that shall make known, they shall make known to you all things which are done here. In other words, he trusted this one to that extent. Now, because we know from the salutation at the close of this letter that this book was written by none other than Onesimus himself. Naturally, he was the scribe that put, took the letter from Paul, Paul quoting it. But how many slaves of that time do you know that had scribeship? that had that kind of education. Usually the scribe had to be of the priesthood or of something pretty special, of royalty or something else, to even be able to read. But here, this slave was pretty high in his slavery, even to Philemon, no doubt, because he was well educated, probably was, a, was um, uh, in a high office in the family of Philemon. So uh, I want you to keep bear that in mind. You know, always always gain what you can 
as to why God would present this one slave. And again, I will say it. <clears throat> it's because he doesn't want you to become a slave. And uh, here, here he had run away, and it was unprofitable because the Philemon lost um, the value of a slave, a very good one, one that was educated, well thought of, no doubt. But he ran. But he ran right into the Lord's arms, so to speak, through the personage of Paul. And boy, did Paul use him. He was a great comfort to Paul. Returning then with verse 12 as we continue. Verse 12 reads, Whom I have sinned again, thou therefore receive him. That is mine own bowels. You, you, you take him like it's my own self. When I send him back to you, he may have been your slave when he left there, but inasmuch as I am the one that converted even you and established you in Christ, then you receive this slave as if it was old Paul himself. Now that's, that's beseeching, all right. That's asking quite a lot. But then this is Paul using psychology to show how in Christ there are no slaves unless you are a slave to Christ, which uh, he only has free men. Why? Because he loves men and women <clears throat> that love him and that follow him. Now, I, I know some of you are saying, well, how can he be teaching that you can enslave yourself today? Well, many of you, if you have too large an appetite for what um, <clears throat> your salary will, pro will provide, you may go in debt for a home, a car, a business, until actually uh, when you take usury, you may pay, and don't, the math here is not important because there are so many different values in town, but let's just, we'll just take a rough general guess here. Let's say that many times in one year you live in that home, but it's your own cell. You lock yourself in it at night. You, I mean, you keep it clean. You take care of it. You pay the taxes on it. But then each year, you through the months and what have you, you will pay maybe, um, let's say, just a round figure. Let's say you have to pay $1,000. Many places, that's only one month. But we'll, we'll just say whatever. How much of it is principal? Pay $1,000. And how much of that $1,000 is principal? Maybe 50 bucks? So you, you worked all month, all month long, for 50 bucks. And you're taking care of your own prison because you've enslaved yourself in usury. That's why God is against usury. I know that this is a young couple getting married. That's the only way you can afford a house. But budget. Watch yourself. Always take what you can afford. And um, <clears throat> do not become a slave to usury. Do not bite off more than you can chew. I'll put it that way. But So you see, this is why God would allow this story of this slave to be a whole book of the Bible. So you could learn from it. Don't become a slave to anything. Don't be, become a slave to a bottle, to a drug, or to a person, or to anything. You're a free man under God, the Creator. And He, he loves all of His children, and He is not a respecter of persons. So therefore, here comes responsibility, where you use this, your head, and you think, and you keep everything balanced, whereby you are in control, you're in charge, in God's name. That's, that's just that simple. Do not become a slave to anything. How do you break away from that? Through Christ. Through one such as Paul, this great teacher. If you'll follow his instructions in loving the Lord, you can rise above all that and be a free person 
forgiving all others, <clears throat> and becoming a free person yourself. Do not become enslaved. All right, next verse, please. Verse 13. And Paul told him, he said, this, this is just the same as you forgiving me. I'm going to put it that strong. Verse 13, whom I would have retained with me. I would have kept him. That in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. If I could, I would have kept him instead of you helping me. He's saying, that, that's how proud I am of him. But naturally, he could not because of the Roman law. He was a runaway slave. And he had to be returned to his master. That's exactly what Paul is doing. Verse 14. But without thy mind, without your permission, would I do nothing. That thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. I want you to willingly agree to forgive him as he has forgiven himself and as I'm sure God has forgiven him. And I want you to accept him back as a brother, not a slave. So here, here we have a wonderful thing. And Paul, Paul says, I, by law, it's necessary that I send him back, but I want you to willingly release him. You see, there's a great difference there. Do you see Christ in that? Christ loves a willing giver to give freedom. That's how it is. And, and, and a cheerful giver. Christ does that. He said, I, I want you, not just because you have to, I want you to willingly forgive him. I want you to give him his freedom. Verse 15 to continue. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, and he, he ran away, that thou shouldest receive him forever. I want you to think about that. He ran away as a slave. But in conversion... He comes back a Christian brother, and you're together forever. It's not just a part-time affair, not just a part-time friend, not just a friend in this lifetime, but a friend forever and ever. Do you understand that's the beauty of Christianity? You, you work in God's field, the world, and you do God's bidding, and you, you do what you can to further the Word of God as best you can using the gifts that God has given you to manage, to operate, to see that things are done properly as best you can. But always be willing, a willing servant to our Heavenly Father. Paul, he's laying it on pretty good here. Verse 15, to continue. For perhaps the he, I'm sorry, we, we got that. He got him forever. Verse 16, not now as a servant. I don't want you to receive him back as a slave. But above a servant, a brother, beloved, specially to me. But how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. And there it is. What a helper. How, what an impression this one uh, had made upon this one Paul. Uh, Paul is laying it all on the line. I mean, he, he's using psychology. I mean, he's, you, you will never find a better example of someone saying, um, this is it. You know, I love him. He's been a great help. He can be a greater help to you. And so forth, if you will forgive him. And um, uh, Philemon, no doubt, is a strong Christian because he has a church in his own home. His wife works in the church, his son works in the church, and, and so it is. Verse 17. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If you count me as a partner, receive him as old Paul himself. 
He's laying it on heavy now. So I, I, I want you to know that. And I, I want you to be willing to do this. I don't want you to do it just because it's necessary. I want you to willingly accept him, love him, and free him. Because you wouldn't take me, old Paul, back and put me back in the harness as a slave. You would hold me up, and I expect you to do that for, for um, Onesimus. Profitable. Verse 18. If he hath wronged thee, or owed thee aught, put that on mine account. You, you, you kind of owe me, Philemon. You owe, you owe me a great deal. I'm calling the chits home here. Uh, if you if you think you've been wrong financially, put it on my tab. You know, I'll I'll I'll, t I'll stand good for it, and you owe me anyway. So here, here we have Paul using this psychology, but now he's getting down where he's saying, this is what I think of the boy. I love him, and I know he's converted, and I, I'm expecting this, and if you can't see it on your own, put it on my tab. You owe me. You call in, calling those uh, uh, debts home. Put it on my account. Verse 19, I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. That party probably did, big. I will repay it. Albeit, I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me, even thine own self, besides. You, you owe me your life. You owe me your soul. We, through me, the word of God came to you, and you're saved. So, uh, here, Paul, again... As I've stated, and I'm repeating myself, but you're seeing psychology, I mean, at its utmost, its best. Paul is laying it on this one. This man loved Paul a great deal. And Paul is not pulling any punches. He said he was going to be bold coming out the gate. <clears throat> he certainly hasn't backed off. And um, he's, he is uh, making arrangements here by following the law, the Roman law, not breaking it, he's bringing this lad home to his rightful owner. And besides that, he wants him accepted there forever. Verse 20, listen carefully. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. You, you do this for me. There is a double play here. At the risk of maybe sounding complicated, I want to explain it anyway. This, um, the name Onesimus is Latinized. It's not Greek. His name, uh, don't make this difficult, just let it flow. His name in the Greek tongue is O-N-A-N-E. Okay? which means not profitable, but to be profitable to me. And when Paul says, let me have joy, that means let me have profit from this. Okay. He's using the Greek name of Onesimus in a double play. You with companion Bibles, this is drawn out for you with clarity, where you won't have any trouble with it. But it shows you the debt our father goes to. You know, Paul knew languages. He knew he knew Latin. He knew Rome. He, he knew the, their tongue. He knew Hebrew. He knew Greek. He knew all the uh, Aramaic. He knew all the languages. <clears throat> and it was no stretch for him to go back to this boy's original name, uh, on enema, on enema, and um, and so it is to say, I, I want it to bring me joy that I can be proud of you for taking him back, for giving him his freedom. Now, Paul didn't, Paul didn't ask for Philemon to send him back to him. I know he wanted him to, but he didn't go that far. He didn't, he didn't ask Philemon to send this one back to him. But in this little 
um, workup of languages here, that's kind of what he's asking. Okay. He's asking for him back. But at the same time, he cuts enough slack, <clears throat> excuse me, that Philemon can make his own mind up. He said, he, he gives me a great deal of profitability, joy. That's what the name means in the Greek tongue. He, he really does that, meaning I, I would really like it. You owe me, I, you can put it on my tab. Uh, after all, I, I saved your life. You could send him back to me where I'm in bonds and prison here. I'm getting on along in years. I could have a little bit of help here from him. He didn't go that far, and yet hidden within this change of languages for a very wise person, that's kind of what he's asking. Verse 21, having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. Wow, that's laying it on heavy. He says, I, I know. I, I've got the confidence to know you're, you're going to do more than I'm even asking. Maybe that was one way of him saying, I know you're going to send him back to me. Uh, you're going to do more than I'm asking, and be that as it may. And he, he really loved Philemon, and he knew that he would do what was right. I want you to see the joy when you free yourself from slavery to this world. In usury, bad habits, whatever. When you free yourself, you're free indeed. And that freedom is so precious. And that's what Paul is trumpeting here, is the joy and the love and the freedom that Christianity, the love of Christ, can bring to a whole family, a whole community. Verse 22, but with all, Prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. Uh, get ready. I mean, you get me a place. I'm coming to see you. Okay. Um, this bears some weight, okay? Paul, Paul has said, I know you're going to do more than I'm asking, but when I get out of prison, I'm coming. I'm going to check up on this, and I'm going to spend some time with you there. I look forward to it, is what he's saying. And, and, and I know this is not a threat, but at the same time, it's psychology. Do you think Philemon would have any choice as a Christian other than to do what this old trooper has asked? Of course not. He's going to do it. And Paul is probably right. He'll probably do a lot more than Paul is asking. Verse 23 there salute the Ephorus, that's to say, lovely, and my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, and Marcus, you know who Marcus is, this is Latin, okay, but it means Mark, it's Mark John, okay. Aristarchus, that's to say, the best ruler, Demas, that's to say, the governor um, of the people, Lucas, you all know who Lucas is. Again, this is Latin. Well, what is it in Greek? Luke. And Luke means light giver, of course. My fellow laborers. You, you tell them howdy. And um, verse 25 to complete the, the little book. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. And so it is. And then... The signature at the bottom, written from Rome to Philemon by Onesimus, a servant. So there you have a well-trained slave that had run away. He was a slave to the world. And here, Christianity and serving Christ, serving our Heavenly Father, assisting Paul in every way that he could to further, not just to help Paul, but to further the Word of God and, and um, making this mark of honesty and love for God. This one fell into 
this duty of serving God, even though he was a slave, to the world, I will say, and yet at the same time, through accepting Christ and doing God's work, he was set, he was set free by Paul with Philemon, of course, has not really Philemon is going to do what's right because he is a good man. Paul wouldn't snow you on that. He, he, was, a, he was a good Christian brother. And I'm sure because Philemon would um, receive Onesimus back in his own fold, that no doubt, and loving Paul the way he did, he'll see that these two are joined back again. That's the way our Father operates. He frees you from hang-ups in this world. You got some hang-up? You're not a slave to anything, are you? If you are, this is how you get rid of it, is by loving Almighty God, your Father, and asking Christ to touch you and heal you and give you a mind and assistance in being responsible and taking responsibility to free yourself as a, from slavery to this world and to be a freeborn Christian, a Christ man, not just for a while, but forever in the family of God. That's your choice. What a book. Philemon, meaning affectionate. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. Listen a moment, won't you please?